I wanted a separate RPM meter that comes on and off when the lathe is turned on and off. That way I know exactly where my settings are at. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. My lathe came from the original manufacturer with your typical pulley and belt system to adjust speed. That gave me three choices from sort of fast to fairly fast to really fast. When I was using the lathe most of the time I just left it on the slowest setting which was 500 RPMs and adjusted my tooling and cutting to minimize chatter and poor cuts. I always felt this was not the best way to do things and what I really wanted was variable speed. To achieve that, I used a treadmill motor and a variable power supply so that I could adjust the voltage going to the treadmill motor and adjust the speed. The problem is, now I don't know how fast the spindle is turning. I'm just going by ear, I'm listening, I'm letting the material and the cutting tool tell me if it needs more speed or less speed. Good skill to have, but it would also be nice to be able to know exactly how fast I'm going. I have an ELS on my machine, which stands for electronic lead screw, and that allows me to cut threads using a stepper motor driving the lead screw instead of change gears and that kind of thing. And the controls on it do have an RPM meter. It tells me exactly how fast everything is going. But I don't always have those components turned on. So I wanted a separate RPM meter that comes on and off when the lathe is turned on and off. That way I know exactly where my settings are at. To accomplish this, I ordered a cheap digital RPM gauge through Amazon. It's the same type unit that I'm using on my mill. And I'm just gonna talk you through the basic setup that I did to put this on my lathe. Let's start with what's in the package. All right, in this box, we have the lead that plugs into the back, as well as the actual RPM gauge. That's the RPM readout. And that's the wire that plugs into the back. The other piece is this right here, and that's the hall sensor. This reads a signal from a magnet that goes on the spinning part of the machine, sends the information back to the readout, and tells you how fast it's going. And this is the magnet. Hooking up one of these is really relatively simple. You've got three wires coming out of the hall sensor, you have power going in. That's it. The only thing you got to figure out is how to power the unit. There are several ways to do this. If we look at the back, it gives the specifics. It says DC 8 to 24 volts, 200 milliamps. So 8 to 24, that's the voltage. And milliamps is how much current it draws. The simplest solution for powering this unit would be just your basic run-of-the-mill power supply. While using a pre-made power supply is a great option, it's not the option I'm going with. I am going to use this control board out of a treadmill. Now you may be wondering, why is he going to use treadmill parts? Well, the truth of the matter is, I have it. I've scrapped out quite a few treadmills. The control board that powers the motor is not this board. This board provides power to the other parts of the treadmill, as well as does some other controlling functions. But what's nice about it is it will turn AC current into DC current, and it'll step down the voltage. So this 
has 120 volts AC coming in, those two terminals right there. And then if you look closely, we've got five volts positive and negative, five volts positive in the ground. And then this one up here is actually, uh, it says nine volts. Now, when I tested it, it was putting out closer to 12. Thankfully, this RPM gauge runs on eight to 24 volts. So even if this is putting out 12 volts, it's enough to power the RPM gauge. The hookup of this is very simple. There are lots of schematics online showing you exactly which wires go where, and there's not a lot to it. The only other thing that you need are some brackets. This is the bracket that I fabricated to house the RPM gauge itself. It's gonna snap in like that, and there's holes in the bottom so that it can bolt to the top of my lathe. And this is the plate that I made to go on the back of the lathe to uh, hold the hall sensor. I have it roughly wired up. In other words, I've twisted the wires together and used a little electrician's tape to keep from accidentally shorting something out. When I do the final install, I will solder each connection and then use heat shrink tubing so that I have a solid connection that can handle the rigors of being in a shop. If I did this right, as soon as I plug it in, the RPM gauge should turn on, and then we can test it to see if it works. It's on, that's a good sign. All right, if I take the hall sensor and put it over the magnet, as you can see, the numbers are changing. That means that it's working properly, the power supply is adequately powering it, and now all I have to do is use the same wiring configuration, but get it to fit in and around my lathe. If you're gonna use a board like this out of a treadmill to do something other than what it was designed for, you really need to put it in an enclosure. Even if it was designed to power an RPM meter, given that it's in a shop where there's lots of chips and metal flying, you're still gonna to wanna to put it in an enclosure. I took some measurements of this board and with those measurements, came up with general sizes and went online to try and find a box. And what I came up with is this right here. Simple screw together project box. You can purchase this on Amazon. That's where I got mine. Has an internal seal. I haven't yet cut that to length. What's nice about it is it's almost the perfect fit. It's a nice fit this direction, but a little long on this end. So all I'm going to do is take a file to it and just lightly remove a little bit of material. So this is what I did. If you look there, you can see that I just removed a little bit of material there, did the same thing on this side, and I rounded the corners off. Let's see how it fits in the box. That is a nice snug fit. So much so that it's not gonna come out easily. So that's pretty much gonna hold it, uh, allow me to wire everything up and keep this power supply self-contained. So here it is all wired up and mounted. I have the box attached to the lathe. Power comes in from here. Now this is switched power. So when I turn on the main power switch on the lathe, it will apply power to this box. Power goes down and out here, and that's what ends up going to my SCR voltage controller. Here I have the power coming out that goes to the sensor and the readout. This is the hall sensor set up on the back. You can see it right there. You can also see the magnet that I affixed to the back of the pulley so that it can sense how many revolutions that magnet is making. So here it is completely installed. I've got the readout for my ELS here and the RPM meter there. Let's turn it on, see how it works. So if I turn up the speed, it takes it a few seconds to get to a clear reading of where the speed is. So let's compare that to the ELS and see how accurate it is. 
because this is reading off a magnetic signal where the ELS is reading off of an encoder that's driven directly off the spindle. It's within one RPM, I can live with that. Now, to see it with the naked eye, the numbers aren't actually flashing like you're seeing on your screen. That's just a result of the frequency of the display and the camera shutter speed. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. The other piece is this right here, and that's the hall sensor. That uses a magnet to tell what is hall sensor. That uses a magnet. I think that's everything I need.